السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Now I would like to greet the thousands of people who are outside this hall. So I don't want you to reply me. I am addressing those who did not make it inside. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I was waiting for a response for those from outside for it to be heard by us, but it's okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. My beloved brothers, my sisters, my dearest sons and daughters, we firstly commence by praying for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, for indeed it hurts our hearts. What is going on is unprecedented. We cannot imagine what is happening. We did not imagine it. We never believed it would happen in front of our eyes with no one doing much or anything meaningful about it. May Allah protect them. May Allah be with them. May Allah Almighty use us to be able to help in whatever way possible, to be able to alleviate their struggles, even if it is only by raising our hands and making dua. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our weakness as an ummah. Amin. May Allah strengthen us as well. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The true worshippers of Allah are the ones who are steadfast. We are speaking about steadfastness today. We've already heard two lectures. I am here to tell you that Allah is the greatest. Allah made me, He made you. He made all of us, He created creation. Allah Almighty is the highest. Allah Almighty is the most kind. He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. But at the same time, He also is severe in punishment. May Allah not punish us. May He forgive us. May He have mercy upon us. He says in Surah Al-Furqan, verse number 61, Allah Almighty says, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا سِرَاجًا وَقَمَرًا مُنِيرًا Glory be to Allah. Who is He? He is the one who put the great stars in the skies. You look at those stars, each one of them is a planet. And do you know that the closest of those stars to us is four and a half light years away. That's the closest star to us. What that means is at night, when you look at a star, it is not there. You are looking at the light, it may not be there. You are looking at the light that was four and a half years ago. It took four and a half years for that light to come to your eyes. That is the distance between you and the closest of the stars. That is my Lord who created this. And if that is the closest, imagine how many millions of light years away are those stars that are further away. This is the power of Allah. So never ever think that, oh man, you are someone big and haughty. Allah says to us, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطُفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Does man not see that we created him from a droplet of semen, a drop Split of semen and from that droplet now he becomes big he's a human he wants to argue he is so argumentative man do you know where you started off do you know where you came from do you know how it was you were a droplet of liquid a droplet prior to that where were you you don't even know you were with Allah may Allah Almighty grant us the ability to be humble May Allah grant us the ability to get closer to Him. Fulfill your salah. It does not help Allah, it will help you. If you miss the salah, fulfill it immediately. Don't miss it. But if you do, fulfill it as qata, A-S-A-P, as soon as possible. 
possible by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is declaring his greatness by showing you he is the one, glory be to him, who has placed the great stars in the sky. Ja'ala fi sama'i burujan. And you know what? Ja'ala fiha sirajan wa qamaran muniran. Depicting the sun and the moon. Allah says that burning lamp referring to the sun and he has also placed the moon the shining moon in the skies all of that allah created for purposes some of them he explained to us some he may not have explained to us but we see the movement of the day and the night so allah says do you know subhanallah وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا سِرَاجًا وَقَمَرًا مُنِيرًا وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا That's Allah. That's Allah. He made the night and the day. He made the night meet the day, the day meet the night. It keeps rotating. That rotation, Allah Almighty says, for those who would like to ponder, for those who would like to take heed, or those who want to show gratitude. Obviously, if you take heed, then you will be able to show gratitude. Thank Allah. Thank Allah that he has placed you on earth. He's given you the opportunity to see the day. It's a new day. I owe him Salatul Fajr at the beginning of the day because he gave me the day. If he gave you midday, you owe him Salat al -Dhuhr. If he gave you the afternoon, you owe him Salat al -Asr. If he gave you the evening, you owe him Maghrib. If he gave you the night, you owe him Isha. That is Allah. Don't think it benefits Allah. Wallahi, it benefits you. How can you turn away from your Lord? Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem alladhi khalaqaka fa sawaka fa adalak. O man, what has deceived you away from your Lord, the most honoring? What has deceived you? Who do you think you are? Do you not believe you are going to return to Allah? Have you not seen others returning to Allah? Prepare for that day. How do I prepare? Well, Allah says you need to become a slave of Allah. You need to become a slave of the most merciful. Immediately after that, in the same surah, Allah says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Amazing verses. Beautiful verses. Allah says, عِبَادُ Rahman. One day I went to a school. And this is a true story. I visited a madrasa and I told him, Who knows the meaning of عِبَادُ Rahman? الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا These youngsters were just learning Arabic. So the one boy put up his hand and he said, all people whose name is Abdul Rahman, they walk properly on earth. I said, what do you mean all people whose name is Abdul Rahman? Ibadul Rahman. He thought that is the plural. So it must be the name of the people. It refers to all of us who claim to be worshippers of Allah. He says, I am the most merciful. Allah the merciful. If you are a worshipper of Allah, truly, you believe in his mercy, so you are the worshipper of the most merciful because it is only through the mercy of Allah that you will get Jannah. If that is the case, then you will walk on earth, carry yourself in an easy, humble, respectable manner. When you walk, you don't stamp your feet. You don't walk with haughtiness. You greet people. You fulfill the rights of how when you walk, you interact with whoever you are supposed to and you lower your gaze when you have to and so on. All this is in the way you walk as a believer how do you carry yourself today i am here how am i carrying myself how are you carrying yourself may allah almighty grant us goodness imagine we are worshippers of the most merciful we are worshippers of the one whose mercy will give us jannah people say well you know how will we enter paradise the answer is not through your deeds but through the mercy of allah not through your deeds, through the mercy of Allah. So the question is, why should I do deeds if I'm only going to enter paradise by the mercy of Allah and not with my deeds? It's a good question, right?
If I'm only going to enter paradise by the mercy of Allah and not with my deeds, why should I do deeds? Because it is through those deeds that you will get the mercy of Allah. That's what it is. You want the mercy of Allah? Then do your deeds. Do your best. Do you know what? There is no way that you can have 100% perfection in your ibadah. Allah says, no problem. Did you do your best? Yes, I did my best. Then leave the rest to me. I will accept it from you. And I will give you my mercy. Because with my mercy, you will enter Jannah. If you had to enter Jannah with your salah alone, without the mercy of Allah, your salah might be rejected. It needs the mercy of Allah to be accepted. Because when you say Allahu Akbar, how much concentration do you have? Sometimes that is exactly when shaitan comes to tell you something. Minimum is you say Allahu Akbar, next thing there is just one fly, one mosquito. You know the sound of that mosquito. I don't want to make it here, but you know what it is. And it will just come by your ear. You will end up slapping yourself in salah. You, you will end up slapping yourself in salah because the mosquito has taken your concentration. And you start thinking what's going on and then you realize Either I didn't kill it or there is another one with the other ear. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Allah says, my mercy. You, did you try your best? Yes, I did. Well, then my mercy will be granted to you and you will enter Jannah with my mercy. May Allah grant us Jannah. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The true worshippers of the most merciful, when people address them, in an arrogant, ignorant manner, in a harsh way, they just say salam and peace. Don't argue with a fool. Don't create debate with someone who is harsh and abusive in their ways and in what they say and so on. I want to tell you something more powerful today for you and I to take heed. Although what Allah has said, obviously it stands. It is the highest. Allah says, when the ignorant address the worshippers of mine, they should just say salam and move on. Are you an ignorant person who addresses others in harshness or with harshness? If that's the case, you have something even bigger to correct. It's easy for me to say when someone abuses you, walk away or just say salam and keep going, keep it moving. The damage you will cause is more. The damage you will cause is more by responding sometimes. But what is more important for you to know is are you one of those cursed ones who abuses people? Are you the one who hurts and harms others? If that's the case, ooh, you need to work on it today. You need to work on it today. I don't want to use my tongue to abuse anyone. Don't talk about this one and that one, especially you don't know who is close to Allah. People talk about scholars today who spend their lives calling towards Allah. You don't even know them personally sometimes. And they want to say things, they want to type things, they want to put things on the internet. And wallahi, they don't realize that abuse makes you a person who has distance from Allah. What if that person is the slave of Allah? I know people, if they cry tears against the abuse that someone has served them, Allah will not allow those tears to come down for no reason. You will pay a price. Be careful when someone is bleeding from their heart, whether it is a spouse or a child or a parent or a friend or whoever it may be. If someone is bleeding in their heart because of something you did, Allah watches that and Allah makes it happen and come. Sometimes when we are bleeding, we say, oh Allah, don't punish this person because of how they have made me feel. Why do we have to say that? Because if Allah's punishment comes, sometimes they might wipe out someone who's close to you because of how they made you feel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us not from among the abusers while we are talking about how to deal with those who abuse us verbally. So Allah Almighty says, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا Those who spend their nights those who spend their nights between prostration and standing in prayer. I spend my night or part of my night in goodness. I want to tell you that is a high quality. What about us? We are not even regular with five daily salah, let alone the night prayer. Am I right or wrong? You want the mercy of Allah. I am talking to you, inviting you, my brothers, my sisters, join for salah to tahajjud at least sometimes. Come forth. At least at some point, it is one of the best prayers after the farad that you could engage in. And by the way, it is invitation only. 
Allah invites you to come and fulfill tahajjud. It can't just happen like that. I want to, I want to come. Allah invites you. You're regular with your prayers. Allah Almighty facilitates it for you. He makes it easy for you. He allows your eye to open. Be it with or without the alarm, by the way. He allows your eye to open. And what does he do? He gives you the feeling within and the energy within to say, let me get up. Let me do my wudu. Let me fulfill some prayer. Let me cry to Allah. This is the most blessed time. Subhanallah. That is from Allah. That is from Allah. May Allah strengthen us at least sometime. Try it, my brothers and sisters. You won't regret. It will change your life. Try it. Get up. Allah will strengthen you. My brothers and sisters. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما Those who are praying to Allah to protect them from the torment of hellfire. Imagine you are doing tahajjud. You are walking steadfast on the earth. You are humble. You have good qualities. Still you are worried. Oh Allah, don't cast me in hellfire. Hellfire is a very tormentful place. It is a very bad place and very very difficult place to be in it is not a good abode oh allah protect me from this that is the dua that is being made then when allah blesses you when you seek forgiveness of allah and you do istighfar and you turn to allah and you work hard in the dunya allah will bless you with certain things in this world we have all been blessed no one from amongst us is not blessed we are blessed but to different levels allah blesses you Today we are seated here, it's a blessing. I am standing in front of you, it's a blessing. Allah will ask us about this blessing. I blessed you in so many ways. What did you do about it? That is Allah's system. When He gives you something, He asks you about it. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, it is not wrong to want to have nice things in this world. I want to have good clothing, I want to have a good car, I want to have a good house, I want to have good children, I want to have good spouse. You know, and so on. And you know, be careful because some people here, someone told me, can you speak about polygamy? Can you speak about what? About what? Polygamy. Can you speak about what? See, the sisters are saying the word. The brothers in front of the sisters, they are so shy. They don't even want to say the word because they know there is going to be trouble. If the video catches me saying polygamy, I remember there was a guy in an interview, you can find it on Google. They were speaking in Arabic to him. He says, hey, so are you married? He says, yes. How many? He says, one. He says, would you like to marry again? He says, yes, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. So then he said, okay, mashallah, brothers and sisters, all, all, the, all the viewers, as you see. He said, what? Are we live on air? He said, no, 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 no. Did you see the clip? Yes, some of you have seen it. So the same thing happened today here in Kaduna. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. But no problem. You know, they say, be careful of those who are silent. Those who talk, don't worry, they just talk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So the brother says, will you talk about polygamy? I said, my brother, may Allah Almighty strengthen us. May Allah Almighty grant us ease and goodness. To be honest with you, we are the people of Allah. And Allah Almighty wants us to move in a certain direction. If you move in that direction, Wallahi, you will be blessed by Allah in amazing ways. I was telling you that many people want good things. They want nice things. They, it's not wrong to have this and that. It's good. When you become greedy, it gets bad. When you become greedy and you do not spend in the cause of Allah and you do not think of others, then it becomes bad. So I told a brother who told me to talk about polygamy, I said, you know what? One is a spouse. When there are many, the plural is what? No, no, no. What is the plural of mouse? So what is the plural of spouse? Spice. It becomes too spicy. You cannot handle it anymore. <laughs> you, what happened to spice? Spice. What spice? I have more than one. Allahu Akbar. You know, that's what happens. You need to be careful. If you want to do something, do it properly or don't do it. 
If you want to do something, do it properly or don't do it. So when someone says, what is the plural of spouse? You know, it's not spice, it's spouse. Spouses, by the way. May Allah Almighty protect us. There are many more important topics to address than that particular one. However, my brothers and sisters, do you even fulfill salah? That's a question. Do, I, I was shocked to learn that there are good men who drink and commit adultery. I was shocked to learn here in this country, good men whom some of them say, you know the man, he's a friend of yours, he knows you, but he drinks too much, he beats me. What? Drinking, I can't imagine. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Is it true? Now the women are scared to say yes. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from bad habits. Allah Almighty will not allow you to grow if you have such major habits that don't bother you. I couldn't believe it. They say, no, there is drinking, adultery, so much that is happening, gambling people. And yet Allah has blessed you. What barakah and blessings do you want in your life? That will come as a punishment, not as a blessing. May Allah protect our men and our women and our children and our parents and our brothers and sisters. We need to have a concern for all of them by becoming steadfast ourselves. <laughs> you know the verse, right? Allah will not change the condition of a nation until everyone changes themselves. So that is why Allah Almighty tells us, you know, no matter how much you are doing, when you have been blessed by Allah, don't be wasteful and don't be miserly. You must know how to spend. You must know what to spend on because one of the first things you are going to be asked when you are leaving this earth is your money, your wealth. Where did you get it from? Where did you spend it? Long, long questions you will have to recall everything and come up with it i got this i got that i spent it here i spent it there how are you going to say i spent it on haram how oh allah you blessed me with a million and i spent it on haram it's better to turn today in istighfar to allah rather than face allah and you don't have an answer because what does allah say those who are balanced when it comes to spending they are not wasteful they are not miserly they are balanced that is a true believer are you true believers i believe we we think we are we claim we are we are striving towards it so inshallah we can spend in a good way we can earn in a good way don't steal from others don't deceive them don't cheat them in business don't earn through corruption don't earn through that which is a crime but earn from halal and when you earn from halal allah will give you the ability to spend on halal and allah almighty will then grant you the beauty of living the world and while you are here content content because why my income is halal it might be less i am so blessed i am so blessed it might be less but i'm so blessed it's not less actually we are eating drinking we have a place we are renting mashallah we are happy we have a small uh, you know toyota 2000 no problem we are moving from one place to the other i'm thankful to allah you are a king you know why you are a king because you have contentment you are a king Riding your bicycle, going on public transport. What do they call those three wheelers here? <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. <laughs> on a three wheeler, you see people sitting at the back. They are so happy with themselves. Wallahi. They are so content. Sometimes you see a Rolls Royce and the guy is looking like, Sir. and he's driving like, eh. my brother, go and see those sitting on the tree. They are just there. Eh, MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. MashaAllah. How? Allah blesses you. You are a king, my brother. You are a queen, my sister. Allah has favored you because you are content. We are happy with how Allah has kept us. I am not prepared to compare myself with someone who has more than me in terms of material items of the world because it's going to snatch away my contentment. Be careful of the gram, the Instagram and the social media and the talks that tick. Be careful of them. Do you know why? You may end up competing, comparing your life with a non-existent person because it's photoshopped. And you are not happy because, wow, oh, she's prettier. Oh, he is more handsome. Oh, they are this. Oh, they look so... You know, when couples come on social media, 
You must remember they have to show you. They have to what? Show. It's a show. That's what it is. They will hold hands and smile. You don't know the war that goes on behind the closed doors. If you knew that, you would say, Astaghfirullah. Rather, I don't watch this. Because you are, you are having small arguments with the mother of your children and you think, ah, you know, it's so bad. Look at this couple here. Wallahi, if you knew that couple, they are looking at you in real life and saying, I wish I was like this brother. Because in their real life, they are, they are fighting. It's just a business deal that they have together in order to be on social media. Let's just do this and do this. We will make money. That's how it works nowadays. A'udhu Billah. So thank Allah. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا Allah speaks about those who do not associate partners with Allah. This is by far the most important thing that is mentioned in all these qualities, even though it may not be the first one mentioned here because already Allah spoke about Ibad Ar-Rahman. It was expected of them already to worship Allah alone. That's when they are considered Ibad Ar-Rahman. But here Allah is repeating it because of how serious the matter is. And He says, those who do not associate partners with Allah in worship at all. One of the unique things about Islam and the most attractive teaching of Islam today that is driving people towards Islam is your personal relationship directly with Allah. Yesterday I was speaking to someone and talking about the different faiths and how the Christians say Jesus is our personal savior. Do you have a personal savior? Yes, I do. The Lord of Jesus is my personal savior. He is my personal savior. The creator of myself and entire creation is my personal savior. I have a personal relationship with him. I talk to him. I know him. He knows me and we talk and he tells me his message. I have it in front of me, but I constantly complain to him about my weakness and seek forgiveness directly from him. He is Allah. That's why Allah says, La tushrik billah. Don't associate partners with Allah. You are a worshiper. We made you worship us alone, alone. Then come. If you worship us alone and come, we might ignore everything else and give you paradise. That's what Allah says. You know the verse, isn't it? So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Do not commit murder. Same verse. True worshippers of Allah, they don't kill. They don't commit murder. Committing murder, you, know, you and I know, is not allowed. In fact, to kill yourself is also impermissible. It is called suicide. It's haram. You cannot take your own life away. Allah gave you the life and let Allah choose when he's going to take it away. You don't come in and say, right, I need to die. Okay, guys. Salaamu Alaikum. I'm going. Okay, there we are. And then you are gone. That doesn't work that way. Allah gave you the life, Allah will take it away. You don't commit murder and you don't commit suicide as well. And on top of that, Allah says, they do not commit adultery. Now, that is a very important aspect because adultery comes in many stages. May Allah protect all of us from it. The worst of it is the final bit where there is adultery, physical connection between the male and the female. Allah Almighty giving hope to those who have already fallen in that sin tells us that the, the, the sin and the punishment is multiplied except for those who seek forgiveness of Allah. Except for those who seek forgiveness of Allah. Now, there are two ways of seeking forgiveness. Number one, you seek forgiveness of Allah, you have repented, you have regretted, you have promised not to do it again and so on and so forth. But your entire life did not change. Only that one aspect changed. It stopped. Allah forgave it and so on. So your sin was forgiven and you are moving on in life. Your life did not actually improve in other spheres. That's forgiveness. Allah forgave you. Okay. You didn't repeat. But there is something higher than that. And today I want to invite you to this. 
إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا. Did you hear that? إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا. Three things are mentioned: توبه, إيمان, and doing good deeds after that. So my life changed. I committed the sin. I asked Allah's forgiveness. I stopped the sin, but I was so embarrassed that my whole life changed. I became more regular. I changed so many things in my life because of Allah and Allah alone. Allah says, Those are the ones, the bad, we will take it and convert it into good. Because why? They changed their whole life because of us. The sin, how many people, they come to Allah because of a negative thing that happened in their lives. How many people, they change their lives because something negative happened. So if Allah brought you closer to Him through something that you repented from, Allah says, oh... We forgave the sin, that is one thing. But because you repented, you believed correctly, you did good deeds, here you are. يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Subhanallah. When you repent to Allah, Allah is the one who accepts that. It goes to Allah. You seek Allah's forgiveness and it goes to Allah. You want to ask for help, ask from Allah. إِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ when you want to seek, seek from Allah. Seek from Allah. Allah will open your door. Speak to your Lord. You know He heard you. Wallahi. He heard you. Believe it in your heart. He heard me. If He has delayed something, it was better for you. And if Allah Almighty has given it to you quickly, perhaps it was better for you. Ask Him, Oh Allah, I don't know the future. I want this. I ask you for this. If you know it's better for me, give me. If it's not better for me, do not give me. So when He doesn't give you, you are still a happy person. You know that was Allah. He saved me from something. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا Those who do not bear false witness. Those who do not bear false witness. And those whom when they pass through that which is futile, when they come across that which is futile, they just pass through. You don't waste time with that. Those are topics on their own. Insha'Allah, I pray that Allah protect us from all these evil things that He has mentioned here. And ask Allah and continue to pray to Allah. I want to mention one of the last qualities here. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا It's not the last one, but it's one of the last ones. Where Allah says, those who constantly call out to Allah. No. Those who, those whom, when they are reminded of Allah, they don't turn a blind eye or a deaf ear. When they are reminded of Allah, they take heed. They consider the reminder a gift. Today we are reminding each other. It's not like I don't need what I'm saying. I need it too. We are reminding each other. And you probably know what I'm saying, but we are wording it because Allah says, ذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين Remind for the reminding definitely benefits the believers. That's why we are reminding each other. So when you are reminded, you take it as a bonus, a gift of Allah. I thank Allah. Someone came to me to remind me. I was just faltering. Now I can renew. You know, when I was little, I used to do tahfiz. My father, mashallah, he believed in, you know, he believed in... That's how we became half in and that's where we are. That's why we are where we are today. I don't think they, I don't think that they, oh, let me word it better, right? I think there are probably better ways of disciplining children today, right? Because today, if I just take my, the phone away from my little one, wallahi, I will get whatever I want done. It's, it's more, if you say, can I take your phone away or can I beat you? I'm only, they will say, beat me. Am I right? Beat me, but so it shows you what is more painful, right? So what happened when I was little? My father, 
if he travels somewhere, when he comes back, usually I was playing while he was away. So I know. He tells me, do you know your work or do we need to charge the battery? <laughs> do you know your work or do we need to charge the battery? And I just tell him, I think we need to charge the battery. You see, because it means I was playing while you were away. Allah Almighty, a very higher example of a totally different nature, but time and again he reminds us to recharge our batteries to say you faulted you needed another reminder you got a boost that's why every friday go to the masjid early and listen to what the imam is saying because it is another boost until the next friday inshallah you get another boost and another boost and so on these boosts are good you must attend lectures no matter who is the one speaking if they are legitimate and they are going to speak quran sunnah and so on good things listen to them go you might hear a word that will change your entire life and it will give you jannatul firdaus so that's why at the end allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Those who constantly make a dua to Allah, they call out to Allah, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا Oh Allah, I'm not worried about myself alone. I'm worried about a whole group of people. Oh Allah, grant me from my spouse and my children, my offspring, my family members, who will be the coolness of my eyes. And make us leaders of the righteous, make us pious, make us people who are leaders calling towards you and close to you. Allah Almighty will grant you. If you pray towards something and work towards it, Allah will open the doors. Allah tells us those are the ones because of their sabr and patience we will give them al ghurfa which is a special place in Jannatul Firdaus. That's what Allah says. Yujzawun al ghurfa because of their sabr. And they will be greeted therein. Salam. And imagine you are greeted wherever you are go, wherever you are going. You are greeted with peace, peace, peace. No need to worry today, no fear, no sadness, nothing. And guess what? It's not for one day. Allah says you will be there forever. May Allah Almighty bless you all and grant us barakah. I have overshot by seven minutes. But I think Kaduna can forgive me. May Allah Almighty bless you all. And may Allah Almighty grant barakah and goodness to everyone who made this happen. May Allah Almighty, may Allah Almighty accept every volunteer who volunteered here today and give them Jannah. And may Allah make those who made this possible from among those who are also in Jannah. And may Allah gather us all as He gathered us here today in Jannah. And the only difference is may Allah gather those who are outside this hall listening here also with us inside Jannatul Firdaus. I am talking to you, I am worried about those standing outside. But I know today the weather is okay. Am I right? We thank Allah. Beautiful venue. I was sitting here enjoying myself with my colleagues. I enjoyed the recitation so much that I know what his name is. Abdul Rahman Ishaq. Sheikh, where are you? Come here. May Allah bless you. Abdul Rahman Ishaq. I think his surname is Kimuku or, or something like this. MashaAllah, Sheikhna, how are you, Sheikh?